Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, the best platform for you to build your very own website. I'm creating the most common dreams and nightmares in LEGO, from the terrifying to the bizarre and everything in between. So let's start building. But first, I wanted to start with a bedroom where our minifigures can sleep. After setting up the walls, I built this bed that's the perfect size for a minifigure. Then I added some decorations like these shelves that have cool toys and collectibles on them. I laid down a rug and then added a guitar over the bed. And with that, our bedroom is complete. So one of the most common dreams is being able to fly, which supposedly means you're feeling free and independent. I grabbed this minifigure and added these cool wing pieces to his back. After that, I set up this micro build of a neighborhood since the minifigure will be all the way up in the air. There's also super small cars that use minifigure skate pieces. To make the clouds look really fluffy, I used a ton of Lego dot tiles that are perfect for adding small details to your builds. And with that, our minifigure is flying free, sailing through the air with the birds. However, one of the other most common dreams is falling. A ton of people have nightmares having to do with school, so for our next few dreams, I had to build a classroom. After laying down some tiles for the floor, I added this chalkboard which uses a sideways building technique. I added school stuff around the room, like this reference poster, an American flag, this calendar counting down to summer break, this cool Lego globe, a bookshelf, and a computer. I also added these class pets and this art sculpture. Our first school nightmare is getting to class when all of a sudden your teacher says, Okay class! Today is your test that's worth 80% of your entire grade. And you have absolutely no idea. And as you're working, you can't remember anything and don't know a single answer on the entire thing. And after your teacher grades it, you get an F minus and fail your entire grade. Another thing that happens in school is if you're dozing off for even just 10 seconds, you know your teacher's gonna call on you. And after she asks you the most out of pocket question of all time, what's the square root of infinity multiplied by George Washington? You're just gonna have to sit there having no idea what's going on. Another really popular dream that a ton of people have is turning into their favorite superheroes with all the cool superpowers that go along with it. Most of the time this consists of taking out bad guys that are trying to fight you. To represent this dream a bit more, I decided to build this ultra-rare San Diego Comic-Con Superman set that's based on the very first Superman comic from 1938. However, the actual set sells for $500 to $1,000, so I decided to try to build it with my own pieces. For exclusive parts like this roof, I built my own substitutes, and it turned out almost identical to the original. If you can spot any differences, leave a comment and I'll respond. And if there's any superhero worth dreaming of being, Superman is one of the best since he has so many different powers. The next nightmare we're building is getting chased, which usually includes some kind of killer or monster that you have absolutely no way of getting away from. So I started this one by building up this creepy underground sewer tunnel. It's muddy and gross, and infested with a ton of vermin like rats and spiders. But even worse, it's the home of this killer clown, who has one of the creepiest official Lego heads I've ever seen. It originally came in this Nexo Knight set, and now, you found yourself face to face with him. However, as you try to run away, you can barely move, going so slow. And right as he stabs you, you lurch up in bed. If you've ever had a dream like this, subscribe to Cure Dimitri's Panic Attack. To brighten things up a bit, a good dream you might have is being in a field of flowers. This kind Kind of dream supposedly means you're feeling happy and fulfilled in life. Kind of like how we see Thanos in a field at the end of Infinity War. Maybe there's also a nice bubbling stream or some cute animals surrounding you, making a serene experience. However, if it's nighttime and you find yourself standing in the middle of a cornfield, you're probably in another nightmare because for some reason, cornfields are always associated with creepy monsters and aliens in scary movies. So if you hear some rustling or happen to come across a demented scarecrow, you better try to wake up as soon as possible. Another really terrifying dream that a lot of people have is being in a graveyard. I used a ton of different plates to give the ground some texture, and then added this girl's bed right in the middle of it. You'll also find a ton of different gravestones, each with a unique build. Guarding the tombstones, you'll find these two gargoyles that I decided to name Gary and Goyle. To add to the spooky atmosphere, I also built up a backdrop that has this moon, along with a ton of single white studs that I used as stars to help make the background pop a bit more. For some reason, another common dream that a ton of people have is teeth falling out, which is really oddly specific, 
and extremely creepy. So for this one, I decided to build a human skull. Over the years, LEGO has released a variety of sets with skulls in them, particularly in pirate sets, but they've never released a full-on human skull set. So to build this one, I used this website called Rebrickable that has a ton of custom instructions that anyone can upload. Thankfully, I already had all the parts needed to build it. However, the program I used for the instructions was absolutely terrible, with random chunks of the build literally just floating, not attached to anything, which made this super frustrating to build. However, the end result looks really accurate and used some cool techniques, like this plain fin for the nose bone. For a size reference, here's the skull next to Sacred Bricks. The jaw can open up, and it has a lot of detail for the different bone shapes. The next thing I had to build was this pair of dental pliers that we'll be using for the tooth extraction. No, 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 no. Next up, we have the dream of being lost, so for it, I thought the best thing to build would be a maze, which I designed to look like one of the hedge mazes from Roller Coaster Tycoon, which by the way, is one of the best games of all time. But for some reason, even if you make the mazes extremely easy, some of the guests still fail at it. Or, you can just make the maze absolutely insane like this guy, trying to make the maze runner in real life or something. But in our Lego maze, you're not alone. There's monsters scattered throughout it, and for some reason this Greek guy named Theseus, I also made obstacles like these spikes that you'll have to jump over, but sadly, once again, there is no real way out of this maze, and you'll be cursed to search forever. My favorite dreams are the weird crossover ones, where you have, like, your grandma, math teacher, plumber, Rick Astley, and Goofy or whatever, all together having lunch or something. Like, none of these people know each other in real life. Why did my brain do this? Now, running into random people and things happening that make absolutely no sense is something that I'm sure almost everyone has dreamt about. So to make this have at least a little bit of coherence, I decided to build the ultimate crossover with the Knights of the Round Table, but actually it's a square table since this is Lego. The Knights include Batman, Goofy, Kermit, Squidward, Wolverine, Raphael, Steve, Shaggy, Aragorn, Gandalf, King Arthur, and of course yourself. To make the castle floor look refined and detailed, I used a special building technique using flat Lego cubes, where instead of actually attaching them together, all of them just pressure fit, giving the floor a really cool looking pattern. The next thing I added were these columns and arches. Underneath them, you'll find suits of armor from some of the legendary knights, along with some weapon racks displaying some of the best swords in the kingdom. No doubt they require level 80 smithing at least. The table is big enough for all 12 of the knights to gather around, where they discuss issues and King Arthur sends them on quests. Venturing around Camelot, you kill some orcs. And for some reason, you run into this random guy from high school that you haven't thought about in like 5 years. For the final build for today, we're going with the fear of being crushed, and more specifically, getting run over by a train. Our minifigure is chained up, unable to even move. This was the first train I ever built, so I based it off of this one from the Lone Ranger. It has a spooky dark green and black color scheme, along with quite a few details on each of the different cars. The engine has this smokestack and some railing going down the sides. It also has this room for the conductor that has the controls. Speaking of which, the conductor is this guy, who definitely only uses this scythe for farming. The next two cars don't have any interior because I wanted to motorize the train. So this one holds the battery that is covered up by these black panels. It has a button on the top for turning it on. These cords then connect to this car, which holds the control sensor for the remote that controls the train's speed and direction. The final train car is a dining room for the passengers, an assortment of various monstrous creatures including Frankenstein, the Wolfman, the Fly, and Slenderman. They're all enjoying a dinner of fine cuisine, but now the time has come. <laughs> and that train absolutely obliterated the minifigure. It seriously smashed him all the way around the track, definitely making this one of the scariest dreams you could have. Lately, I've been using Squarespace to build a website that gives a behind the scenes look at the process that goes into creating my YouTube videos. For example, this gallery page shows all of the individual photo frames that are needed for a stop motion clip that only lasts a few seconds. If you've ever had the desire to share your hobby with others, Squarespace has all of the features you need. Their professional templates make it extremely simple to get started with just a few clicks, but they are also customizable. So you can make your website fit your specific theme, tone, or brand, whether it be for gaming, a vlog, or something else entirely. If you're trying to monetize your hobby, Squarespace makes it simple to set up an online storefront, whether it be for physical products like minifigures or digital ones like downloadable instructions. Squarespace also allows you to seamlessly add content from all of the major social media platforms, making it the perfect place to bring all of your content together under one website. Go to squarespace.com slash Brad's Brick Post to start your own website today with a 
free trial, and at checkout, use code Brad's Brick Post to save 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain. And thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video.